To be honest with you, the idea of living and traveling on a sailboat with our newborn baby kind of scares me. All of the risks that we accept as part of our lifestyle are now being transferred to our baby girl. But even beyond the obvious dangers of sailing offshore and living off grid, I also wonder how we're going to deal with the simple challenges that all families face, but in a much smaller space and without so many modern conveniences or sources of support. So here in Malta, a small island nation in the middle of the Mediterranean, we're taking some time to get to know our little Isabella, to learn how to be parents on a boat. This is her oh. first boat ride, isn't it? And to work on boat improvements that will make our life aboard easier and safer once we do start traveling again. I'm not used to making this little progress with projects. She is freaking out. Yeah, it broke. It doesn't work anymore. And they don't have a workbench, so we're using the forklift. So a lot of the projects here are going to be focused on making it safer for us to sail this boat with such a short-handed crew. Yeah! <laughs> okay, well, Desiree did not get a lot of sleep last night. Little Isabella woke up like every half hour. I've got a lot I want to do today, so I'm going to try to get some boat work done and get Isabella out of the house so Desiree can sleep. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> Take your pacifier, it's okay. Man, it's a nice day today. Calm and sunny and warm. What do you think, baby? Are you gonna freak out now that we're not walking? This is gonna be a real experiment to see if I'm gonna be able to actually get anything done with, with her and not with Desiree. What do you think of this harbor, big guy? Well, it's it's beautiful. Today's a wonderful day. You ready to do some boat work? Yep, both Oso and I are, huh? So yeah. We're ready. All right, well, she is freaking out. So I just barely got started with my project and I just don't think it's gonna work. So she, again, she stays calm if I walk. So I think I'm just gonna take her for a walk and take her to Desiree and then come back and try and get something done. All right, so the big guy and I left the Airbnb and we're back at the boat. And we are going to be starting to work on what is basically our, our network and like an electronics compartment behind the TV here. So that's where it's going. Yeah, so we got all that nice storage there. So basically what this is about is, you know, we've, I've already showed you my new computer setup here. And kind of along with that, we are doing a whole new system for storing all of the tremendous amount of footage that we produce every single week. We have just kind of had like tons and tons and tons of hard drives up to this point. Well, I finally got sick of that because it was too hard to find old footage and everything is just everywhere all the time. So I finally broke down and bought this bad boy. So this is a Synology NAS or like a network attached storage drive. These are all hard drives. There's some solid state drives in there as well. There's also a computer in this thing and this can connect to the internet all by its own, completely independent of our computer. So my grand plan here is to combine this with the new computer, with our Starlink, which we will be installing shortly. And that is all going to make it so that we're able to upload footage, upload episodes, connect to the internet, no matter where we are on the planet and we'll be able to do it in a way that saves electricity. So that's what this compartment is going to be. This is going to be our Wi-Fi router, NAS drive, our Starlink router, and that's why I brought in the big guns. <laughs> <laughs> to build a shelf. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the first thing I wanna do is remove the stereo system, remove the Blu-ray player, and remove the facade that's kind of holding all of that, and then put our NAS drive down where all that stuff used to be underneath this existing shelf. One of the toughest parts of doing projects while living on a sailboat is finding the space to do things like cut an entire 4x8 sheet of plywood. Birgu, the part of Malta that we're currently in, is kind of a fancy tourist destination and not exactly the kind of place where you'd want to use a circular saw on the sidewalk. Luckily, Grand Harbor Marina was kind enough to let us use their small garage to cut our shelf to shape, which is just a huge help with a project like this. And they don't have a workbench, so we're using the forklift, which is a first, Perfect. but it's working very well.
So right now we're taking what was the kind of false front of your stereo system that we took out. And I'm gonna cut a straight line down here so we can cut these up into individual stop blocks. We'll be able to put stop blocks in there from keep it moving around yeah. when you're sailing. So once we had cut the shelf and blocks to shape, it was time to leave our awesome little workshop and head back to the boat. I envy people who do home improvement projects in a house. If you put a new piece of equipment on a shelf, it'll just stay there on its own, like forever. On a boat, everything needs to be completely secured so that the boat can get tossed around in a storm and the equipment won't go flying across the cabin. That's a good looking shelf, big guy. Fits perfect. Yeah. All right, well, good job today, big guy. Yeah. We built a shelf. Yeah, job well done. The next day, we decided to take a break from boat work and take a water taxi to Valletta with my folks to show them the capital of Malta. Okay, how's she doing? This is her oh. first boat ride, yeah. isn't it? She's in and out of consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing there, baby? She's like, last thing I know, we were asleep in the house. Yeah. Now we're on a boat. Yeah, she's like, wait, what is going on? <laughs> hey, you gotta go in the corner, Mom. No way. <laughs> no way. Oh. Over here. Hold on. Yeah. Make sure you look you out the go? window. No way. <laughs> How fast does it go? It goes good. pretty fast. How many stories is it? I don't know. 100 feet. Ah. Uh, Two more. 200 feet. Yeah. Uh, how many stories is it? That is not funny. <laughs> Don't turn around. I am not. Put <laughs> it. Are we there? Desiree and I spend a lot of time and effort seeking out exceptional experiences, but getting to explore this historic city with my folks, Isabella and Oso, was the best way to spend an afternoon that I could possibly imagine. All right, so projects with a baby have been going very, very, very slow. I'm not used to making this little progress with projects, and I'm used to making very, very little progress with projects. The next project is even more frustrating because of that. You may remember I installed that 220 battery charger in this compartment down here because our solar panels can't really keep up with our power demands in the winter. Well, it turns out that that little charger produces quite a bit of heat. It also turns out that it doesn't have any active cooling. So the thing just dissipates heat by air kind of slowly flowing by it. It also turns out that I installed it in a very small compartment with virtually no airflow. So um, yeah, it broke. It doesn't work anymore. <laughs> See, this is fun. Everyone learns something. You watch me, I do something wrong. You don't do it that way. This is very productive. So I had to buy this, a whole new battery charger. It cost me like $550 or was it euros? But I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. This time I have a plan. So basically this is a 220 volt little fan, like a computer fan. And I'm gonna be able to wire this to the 220 input at the battery charger. So basically the moment that we connect shore power, this will start running. But then once we disconnect from the 220 shore power, this just won't run. So what I've got to do is get in there and remove the old charger. Then I'm gonna drill a large hole in the bulkhead using a hole saw right behind where the charger is mounted. Woo! We did it, we have a hole. So you may be wondering what in the world I'm doing with such a large hole saw on this relatively small boat. I admit, I've got a little bit of a hole saw addiction. Okay, got this hole saw, this hole saw, these four 
hole saws. This hole saw, I've got this hole saw. How do I have so many hole saws? I've got this hole saw, this hole saw. I feel like no matter how many hole saws I own, I always come into a project where I'm like, I don't have that hole saw, so I need to go buy one. <laughs> that is officially the drinking word of the episode, hole saw. Good luck, and it's retroactive. So now on the other side of that bulkhead, I'm gonna mount the 220 volt fan. That way it can constantly blow fresh air onto the battery charger when it's running. Then I'll mount the new battery charger and wire the fan to the 220 inputs for the charger. So the fan basically works where depending on which way you wire it, the fan blows one way or the other. And I want the fan to blow this way and I'm not entirely sure how to guarantee that. I think I'll be able to run a test. So I'm gonna stick these wires in to these butt connectors before I finalize it, turn on the breaker and just see which way the fan blows. Oh yeah, that's the right way, cool. Okay, so let's turn on the breaker, see if the fan works. All right. That's what we want to hear. Oh man, this is gonna be great. I can feel a ton of air coming all around the charger. So yeah, this is gonna be perfect. All right, so that is in, that's good. There's one more problem that we need to solve and that is that the air that the fan is gonna be pushing onto the charger is coming from a compartment down here under the nav station. We need to make sure that that compartment has ventilation so that the air that the fan is drawing from is nice and fresh and can circulate from the rest of the boat. That's why I actually found on Amazon again this nice little grill which will work really well to conceal the opening that I'm gonna cut in that locker door down there and to cut that opening I'm gonna use yes an even bigger hole saw. <laughs> Okay, now that that's all done, all that's left is to connect the charger to the charge bus and see if it works. Okay, the new one's installed. Let's see what happens. Fan turned on and we got lights. Okay, we'll just hit mode till we get to lithium ion. Okay. Yeah, we got amps getting pumped in. So we're good. Woo! I think that is done. So I've still got a program the charger using my phone, but it's installed, it's working, the fan's running really good. I think the whole system's gonna work great. So hopefully that is the last time I have to buy that stupid thing. I'm gonna run out of money. Now my folks are heading back to the States and leaving here in like two days. And so we're gonna be moving back on the boat. And it was really important that I finished this project before we did that because the S-Bar diesel heater is not working. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. It's gonna take me some time to diagnose it. I've already kind of tinkered around with it and I can't figure it out. So I needed to get the battery charger up and running because we still have this West Marine electric space heater, boat heater thing that we should be able to run as long as we've got that battery charger running. So anyway, point being that I'm really glad we got that working so that we won't freeze at night. All right, so we are waiting on some stuff to complete our other more important projects. So we're doing kind of a pet project that I've been really excited about for a while. That is that the camera that I'm filming this on is our Sony A7S III. And it's kind of a big-ish camera and it's a little bit like, I don't know, it's, it's heavy, it's hard to hold well. When I move around, it's hard to hold it stable. So ideally, we'd be able to mount this camera around the boat. And we can kind of do this because we've got like a Joby here that I hold it with. And this can sort of be, you know, mounted onto stuff to get like, as you can see, really, really nice shots like this. The point being that to get it just right, kind of takes time, takes some effort. Even once we get it onto something, it's not perfect. If we're underway, it's gonna move around a lot. And so the point being that I'd like to be able to easily mount the camera. Oh, see, here we go. Oh. And so we have finally kind of developed 
a means of quickly connecting this camera to different mounts on the boat. So that's what we're working on now. We found this Manfrotto quick release system. So basically you got these two pieces, they click together. Ooh, very nice. And then they can very quickly disconnect. Woo! Here, I'll attach it to this big, fancy, nice ball head that we got. And then that will connect to the mounting position. And then the camera itself will connect to the ball head. But the thing is, Atticus 2, the interior is so nice because if you look at anything that's mounted permanently to the interior, like these reading lights, they all have their own wooden mount that they mount to that is then mounted to the boat. So that's why we brought in the ringer and the big guy was able to make us some pretty sweet wood mounts. This is out of mahogany which matches pretty well the grain of uh, Atticus. Interestingly enough, this is a piece of mahogany left over from some work I did on Atticus 1. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. had no idea. This is all the mahogany we use for your companionway trim and oh, stuff like that. Oh, that's so funny. You just thread that on like that. And this part will be semi-permanent. So once that's on, the that'll just live there. Bulkhead is going to stay like that. Boom. Boom. On. And then to make sure it's strong enough, we're going to through bolt those four holes and that should hold it on pretty well. And Devils has a towel rack. Yeah, is that the real purpose of yeah, it? I think so. I'm sure it will be eventually. <laughs> okay, so should be as simple as just clicking this in and then tightening it. There you go. Wow. Oh my God, that is so awesome. I mean, it's like so sturdy and solid. And I mean, the real awesome thing about this spot is I'll be able to film myself with kind of the best looking shot on the whole boat. You can see everything behind me. The lighting's really good. So this is gonna be awesome to be able to really quickly, boom, click this camera into position and be able to do this, even if the boat's moving around or going crazy. And then I can do this. It's super simple to just boom. Oh, ho, 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 ho. what do you think, big guy? Pretty impressed? Very impressed. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Another connection between Atticus 1 and Atticus 2. Yeah, no kidding. That's so cool. <laughs> So I've discussed with you guys about how our goal with a lot of these projects here in Malta is gonna be making it so that it's easier for me to single hand the boat. Desiree is gonna be kind of the baby officer on board. She's gonna be in charge of taking care of Isabella and I'm gonna have to basically sail this boat by myself a lot of the time. So a lot of the projects here are gonna be focused on making it easier for me to sail the boat by myself. But some projects like today's project are gonna be focused on making it safer for for us to sail this boat with such a shorthanded crew. So today I am going to be installing an AIS transceiver. So AIS stands for Automatic Identification System and it basically makes it so that when we look at our chart plotter we can see all of the boats in our vicinity, we can see their speed, where they're going, the direction they're heading, and the computer in the chart plotter is able to decide if there's a risk of collision and kind of what we need to do to avoid that collision. We have AIS on the boat Boat, but we only have a receiver. So we can receive all of the AIS signals that all the boats around us are sending, but we can't transmit a signal ourselves. So other boats in the vicinity don't see our little boat icon show up on their GPS. So we are jumping on the AIS transmit bandwagon by installing a BNG V60B. So this is basically just a radio, a VHF radio that does both transmit and receive with AIS. Now it's kind of a bummer because our existing VHF radio is also a BNG. It's not a very old unit. It works really, really well. I hate replacing stuff that's in really great shape like that, but I just feel like this is just such a leap forward in safety on this boat that it's worth doing. Plus, this thing is going to solve another problem that we've had, and that is the fact that you've probably seen in our videos that when we want to communicate with another boat that's far away, we always come down here inside the boat to do it. Okay, I'll, I'll catch you on my radar. I'll be okay for you. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. And when we were motoring through the intercoastal waterway in the east coast of the United States, when we wanted to communicate with all of those bridges and all of those other boats, we had to use our dinky little handheld radio that had a really, really short distance that it was effective in. It just, we couldn't hear things very well. Other people couldn't hear us very well. This is sailing vessel Atticus. What in the f 
Well, now with this thing, this supports wireless handsets like this bad boy. So I'll be able to hang out at the helm and talk to anybody that I want to with really high quality, really good transmission power. So this is gonna be a total game changer. So with all of that said, it is time to install this bad boy. Let's give it a go. It's kind of funny because I was never really that nervous about making cuts and drilling holes on Atticus 1, but the woodwork on Atticus 2 is a work of art. And I'm a little terrified about making a mistake and screwing up this beautiful artistry. And yes, I know what you're thinking. I did just use a jigsaw in the galley on our cutting board and I have sawdust all over the galley. So please don't tell Desiree. All right, mounted the radio and it looks good, man. It looks very sharp. Now, if you just have a VHF that is an AIS receiver, then you only need one antenna. But to both receive and transmit and to have a VHF radio, you need two antennas. Now, that would be a huge bummer if I had to go up the mast and install another antenna. I don't even know where or how I would do that. But there is a workaround, and that is a splitter like this one. This basically makes it so that we can have one antenna act as though it's two antennas. So I'm going to mount this back there and wire it all onto everything. All right, so I was just reading through the installation instructions for this splitter, and it turns out that they want to have a one amp fuse in line on the power cable, which is frustrating to say the least because it didn't come with an inline fuse holder of any kind. Then it dawned on me that there was an old inline fuse holder in the old radio that I didn't need, so I cut that off. Hopefully, I actually have everything I need for this. That would be awesome if I did. Okay, as usual, moment of truth. Let's give us some power, see how we did. Hey, there you go. All right. Okay, VHF is totally installed and wired, so that's ready to rock. Otherwise, I need to still register this. And I'm so tempted to like hop on the computer and try and do that right now, because I'm like so pumped about this thing. Uh, yeah, it's almost seven, so it's time for me to get out of here and go have dinner with the family. <laughs> On one hand, having a baby has made it harder than ever for me to do boat projects. But on the other hand, I've never been more motivated to take on the challenge each and every day. What you doing, yeah. Isa? Is she riding that donkey? She's yeah. riding no so. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Look at Oso. He's like, this Oso, is what I like. that stagecoach. <laughs> Normally, when I'm working on the boat, I live for the future. I tell myself all the sacrifice will be worth it once we start sailing again. But now when I need motivation, I don't need to look any further into the future than the next time that I get to hold Isa or just look into her eyes. Thank you. 